What's going on there, Nick? Sorry I didn't say hi to you last time. I seen you were on here too, brother. Um, and when I was giving a shout out, and then I went into talking, and then I seen your name pop up and everything like that. And anyways, glory to the Most High. How's it going, Mason? Hope your day is going well. Hope everybody where the weather is is decent for them. It's been warm, but at least it's been a little bit of a breeze with it. Uh, I'll probably load up my computer just so if I do have stuff that I need to say. proof. Um. But what it is. Yeah, it's as good as it gets. It is good. It's as good as it gets. When you're living, when you're living on autopilot in a world, when you've already like, if you're if you're so far into scripture, you're on autopilot, right? You do His will. So, and when that happens. Then everything is like, I don't know, hit or miss in the world. Um, I'm going on proving that Jesus could not have been the Messiah. Uh, majority of that. And that neither was John. And that it was speaking of end days. Um, so first thing I'm going to go to is Isaiah and I believe off top of my head it's chapter 7 uh, that it talks about what to look for for the Messiah so let's get this straight they warned everybody what the Messiah was going to look like well, what to look for, not what he looks like, what to look for. If the Messiah was to look like something, does that not tell you that if somebody knew that, they could pretend to be that person? Look at look at today. We have how many people on TikTok claiming that they're the, they're the chosen one? Um, saying all this stuff. They were speaking about me right here. <laughs> You have she Messiah going on that uh, the whole book was about her and she is the new law and it's the, the, the greatest thing I've ever seen. Uh, I might start my computer over because I notice when I do that, it's, um, yeah, that's, 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 that's the issue with it. And this is the scary part. If people, you guys have started to really, uh, dig into, uh, scripture, you realize the lamb, the lamb is meaning a sacrifice. The lamb is just a word for a name for the word when you break it down on a technicality let's go red um so when you break it down that way right this thing is not i'm going to restart my computer But anyways, regardless, ah, uh, yeah, but most people couldn't spell that. <laughs> yeah, that's the sad part. That is the sad part. But anyways, so basically I'll break it down when I'm going to go into scripture. So I'm going to break down Isaiah first in 7. That it tells us that we shall be looking for somebody who eats locust and butter is the only thing that they shall eat. He shall be dressed in camel's fur, etc. 
That's what it says the Messiah is to look like. Jesus Christ never, never was dressed in camel's hair and he never ate locusts and butter. For somebody who was to be the Messiah and how they put in the Bible that he was the Messiah, don't you think they would have had a lot more details of what the Messiah was to look like that they would have fit that into their agenda to prove to you? I believe that's why they couldn't do that because... It was so stupid of a story, only fools would follow or fall for the blatant lie. That's when you break down. Uh, how's it going there, Tanya? That's how you break down that the blatant lie. Um, and then Jesus claims that John the Baptist is the chosen one who is to come. Because we know that the Messiah is not God. The Messiah is the people's God. The, if you obey, but only because he is given the glory of the Most High. He's not the Most High. Although I've had some pretty crazy idea. Imagine that. Imagine the Most High. Because you know how they say that the Metatron and uh, the angels accidentally bow, bow down to Metatron. They thought that he was a lesser Yahweh, a, a lesser God. They thought that it was him. Because he carried the same remnant. He looked looked the same as him. I always sat there and thought that to myself. You know how like they made the show Undercover Boss and all that kind of stuff. Imagine God, the Most High, actually came down here himself. And left Metatron sitting up on the throne. So he would actually sit there and people would think that God's still in heaven. But he came down so he could actually see how people would treat him. Wouldn't that be a, an awesome way to actually get back to your people? Come down and handle business yourself be a pretty uh, pretty cool concept it would be a pretty cool concept because you have to remember isn't it angels who help you anyways of course are governed by the most high through all the laws but I got way too many programs on this computer okay so Isaiah King James Version Chapter 7, the sign of Emmanuel. So, now when we look into this, we're going to notice that when you use this, it shows us in the Bibles where else it is written that this is supposed to be to, to fulfill this law. But watch what this says. Moreover, the Lord spake again unto Ahaz, saying, Ask thee a sign of the Lord thy God. And ask it either in the depth or in the height above. But, Ahaz, but Ahaz said, I will not ask, neither will I tempt the Lord. And he said, Hear ye, O house of David, is it a small thing for you to worry men, but will ye worry my God also? Who is speaking to Ahaz right now? Who is speaking to Ahaz? We know that it's a Lord. A Lord is speaking to him. Then when he said to Ahaz, but Ahaz said, I will not ask, neither will I tempt the Lord. He said, hear now, O house of David, is it small thing for you to worry men, but ye shall worry my God also. So the Lord, right here, who they say is Jehovah is supposed to be God. Yet he says here that is it, but will ye worry my God also? Because remember, the Lord is speaking to Ahaz. So if the Lord is speaking to Ahaz and the Lord says to the house of David, but will ye worry my God? Therefore the Lord himself shall give you a sign. Behold, a virgin, which the word is supposed to be a young woman, it was changed, which we will show you in the Bible. We will show you what they did in the Bible. In the New Testament, are you guys ready for this? Are you ready for this? This is how corrupt the Bible is. And also, Matthew.
Oh, just heard a ching ching. Just won some brownie points there. I just leveled up in the in the avatar game here. Do 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 do. Feel like Super Mario. I just ate a big mushroom. So it says here. Listen, every one of you in the royal family of David, you have already tried my patience. Now you are trying my trying God's patience by refusing to ask for proof, but the Lord will give you a virgin. Now, when we look up you right here, we will find out what you means. You, virgin or young woman. In this context, this difficult Hebrew word did not imply a virgin birth. However, in the Greek translation made about 200 B.C., how did they call it 200 B.C. in the Greek version and used by the early Christians, the word par parthenos had a double meaning. While the translator took it to mean a young woman, Matthew understood it to mean a virgin. So, Look at this. This shows you, this is in a Bible. This is the key to freedom Bible. This tells you in the Bible that they've known their mistakes and where their translation comes from. Okay? So they're saying that it was a young woman. It wasn't even a virgin. They changed it to a virgin birth to add something to it. Because they, we all know, virgin births were by Astarte and her demonic husband. So they could slaughter children on Christmas Day. So anyways. But let's go to what I'm actually showing you. Therefore the Lord himself will give you a sign. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son. And shall call his name Emmanuel. Butter and honey shall he eat. And he may know to refuse evil and choose the good. For before the child knows uh, to refuse uh, evil and choose good, the land that thou harvest shall be forsaken by both her kings. So, let's look at this. This is talking about the Messiah in end days. And how I can prove this is this. For before the child shall know to refuse evil and choose the good, the land that thou abhorrest shall be forsaken of both her kings. So the land shall be forsaken. When the child learns to choose good, then all things will be made new. This is what this verse is telling us. The Lord shall bring upon thee and upon thy people and upon the fathers of the house days that have not come from the day that Ephraim departed from Judah and the kings of Assyria. Uh, and it shall come to pass in that day the Lord shall hiss for the fly that is the utmost part of the rivers of Egypt and for the bee that is in the land of Assyria. And they shall come and they shall rest of and the rest of them desolate valleys and the holes in the rocks and upon the thorns and upon the and upon the bushes. Now, none of this has ever happened. None of this has ever happened. This this is all happening now that the Euphrates rivers and all these things are drying up and we're having all these problems. In the same day shall the Lord shave with a razor that is hired, namely them beyond the river by the king of Syria, the head and the hair of the feet, and that shall also consume the beard. So this is all, all the people that are in um, the far countries, Egypt, Assyria, um, uh, all the Islamic states, Everywhere like that. That's what we're seeing happen. That's what we're seeing. You can see that Islam no longer does Islamic people keep their beards. No. Clean, shaven, trying to look like uh, like uh, like um, uh, playboys, basically. Um, they dress all suave. That is not the way of the Most High. That is not the way. That's why it says, even the men shall wear more jewelry and brighter colors than the women, which we're seeing today. We've been seeing this for the last 20 years, technically. 
we've been seeing that most of people are actually coming. Do you think there is much to find under the Sahara that is buried in the sand? No, no, there's nothing there. Everything's spiritual. See, that's the one thing that, that makes me laugh about certain things because this is a spiritual warfare that is happening that is tearing people apart down here. It's nothing to do with the physical realm. It's nothing to do with the physical realm. You can literally be having the worst day in your life, but you're high spirited and you feel great. You can see the world burning around you. And as long as you have the spirit of greatness, of righteousness and all that stuff, yes, it's sad because you physically see something, but yet my spirit tells me I'm okay. So, it's a spiritual thing. It's not a physical thing that's happening with the people. Um, I meant with the de uh, uh, Dead Sea Scroll kind of thing. Uh, that was just to reveal onto the people because of certain things were hidden, right? Remember all the scrolls that were actually lost in, um, and they were placed in places that were supposed to be hidden. That way knowledge would come because they knew that they were going to taint it, right? They knew that they were going to taint it. The most high hid things. So... And then this is on 21. And it shall come to pass in that day that a man shall nourish a young cow and two sheep. And they shall come to pass the abundance of milk that they shall give. And he shall eat butter for butter and honey shall everyone eat in, in that is left in the land. So please tell me now where did Jesus give the land that everyone would only eat of milk and honey? Where was that land? I can't be that Messiah. Right now, we are going to the land of milk and honey. We are going to the land of milk and honey. The cow is known as, uh, as a heifer, which is known as uh, a woman. So, a woman is wisdom that leads you to the land of milk and honey, which is the penal gland. That's exactly. It's happening now. It's happening now. It never happened before. The devil made it look like it happened before so everyone could give up on life and start acting like a fool and say, "This we, we were already judged. Jesus took our judgment. We just have to know his name. That violates the Ten Commandments. Thou shalt not put no other God before me. Not the Son of God. Any God. Do not place anybody do not place anybody before me that's just how it is um da, 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 da. and then i'm trying to find a spot where it tells you what he looks like um because it talks about how he is um dressed in camel's fur Uh, I'm just going to use my phone if I... Why do churches have Sam insurance? Because Sam, Sam is uh, Sam Yeza. That's why if you look at it, Jesus, which is Lucifer, who is Uncle Sam. What do the Americans believe in? Jesus, football, and guns. And when you look at who they pay as Uncle Sam... An uncle means a brother to somebody. So Lucifer's brother is Sam. Sam Yeza, the fallen angels, for they came down. And they start to uh, manipulate the world, right? In Isaiah, it says that he shall wear camel's hair. Sorry, it's not in Isaiah. You know who they're describing? Elijah. That's 1 Kings. The end of 1 Kings. The beginning of 2 Kings. It just came to my head. It doesn't say that there. It says it in a uh, thing. Because then it's in Matthew 3. So when we go to Matthew 3. So when it was talking about that person. Saying that they shall um, eat uh, honey. 
etc. Um, we can look at and see. And the same John, uh, this is 3, 4. And the same John, his hair remnant was camel's hair, and he had leather girdeth around his loins. And his meat was locust and wild honey. Then went out of him to Jerusalem and all Judah and the region about the Jordan, and were baptized, in, baptized of him in the Jordan, confessing their sins. So right here it talks about John is the one who shall be, um, who will eat um, locust and honey. Um, so butter and wild honey, because remember they would make butter from locusts as well. But locusts also means demons. He shall eat demons. Remember, because if he was to cast out and forgive you of your sins, it would mean you would push away demons, right? You were able to cast them out. Um... So that would say that it's John. Now how can we prove that it would be John is now Matthew 11 from what it says. Verily I say among you, them born of women, there has not risen one greater than John the Baptist. Neither withstanding, he is the least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than he. And for the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven suffereth violently. So why is he making such a big deal about John the Baptist? Now he tries to convince you for all the prophets and the laws prophesied until John. And if you are ready to receive it, he, uh, he is Elijah who is to come. So if he's telling you he's Elijah, Jesus is trying to claim he is God. So he cannot be God. He even Jesus in his own testimony says, I am not God, I am the Son of God. For my Father is greater than me, but we are one. So how can he be greater if you're going to say he is one with his Father? Now you know that he doesn't because he says, I only do the things my Father has told me from the heavens. I follow his will. Hence why on that day of judgment, many will stand before me. This is uh, Matthew 7:21. Those who stand before me on that day, I will deny them and they will say, but in Jesus, your name, we prophesied, cast out demons and worked many miracles. And I will say to them, I never knew you, you evil people of inequity. Inequity means lawlessness. Hence why Jesus says, I did not come to abolish the law, but to fulfill the law. You must keep the commandments until the day of judgment when my father shall come down from the heavens with the lamb and we shall judge the world for what it is. Um, you shall keep his commandments. Then we will make all things new. So he couldn't have been the Messiah. It's telling you that. He's even telling you. He's giving you riddles and telling it to them right in their faces. Hence why he says to them, these people are deaf, dumb, and blind. This is in number 10. Uh, or sorry, it's, I think it's 13. 13, the purpose of Jesus. Okay, yes, 13, 10, sorry. Uh, I was thinking 10. 13, 10. And his disciples came and said unto him, Why speakest thou into parables? And he answered unto them, Because it is given to you to know about the mysteries of heaven, but to them it is given not. The Messiah's job is to come to tell the people about the kingdom of heaven. That's his job. And they shall have understandings to these things. He tells you it was given to his disciples, but to them it is not given. So why did he have the multitudes of four or five thousand people follow him, but yet Jesus laughs at them and tells them that these people have no clue? How does he laugh? Next, next verse. For whoever hath in him shall be given, and whoever shall have an abundance, uh, but whoever has not from him shall be taken away what little he hath. Therefore speak I to them in parables, because they see but see not, and they hear and hear not, neither do they understand. And in them is fulfilled the prophecy of Isaiah, which saith, By hearing ye shall not hear and, in, and not understand, and seeing ye shall see and not perceive. For these people's hearts are waxed, and their ears are dull of hearing, and their eyes have closed. And they... Uh, at least at any time they should see with their eyes and hear with their ears and understand with their heart, they should be converted and I would heal them. So now he says that's in Isaiah. In Isaiah. So now when we go to Isaiah 6, 10, 
I know I'm speaking fast, but when I put this on my um, YouTube, people will be able to pause it and go and look. Now watch what his 6.10 says, but we're going to start at 6.8, Isaiah's commission. Also, I heard a voice of the Lord saying, whom shall I send and whom will go for us? Then said, I am here. Remember, this is a vision of Isaiah. And he said, go, tell the people, hear ye indeed, but understand not, and see ye indeed, but perceive not. Make the heart of these people fat and make their ears heavy and shut their eyes, lest they see with their eyes and hear with their ears and understand, and they shall be converted and healed. Then said I, the Lord, how long? And he answered, this is proving it could not be Jesus and Jesus is a deceiver right here then said i lord how long and he answered until the cities laid waste without inhabitants and the houses without men and a land be utterly desolate and the lord has removed men far away and there will be a great forsaken in the midst of the land yet in it a tenth of it shall return and shall be eaten as a teal tree and an oak whose abundance in them then their cast their leaves and the holy seed shall be substance thereof this tells you this was uh six uh isaiah six uh eight all the way through 13 so when you break that down it says that this person shall come and he shall see that they are deaf dumb and blind one was sent to make them blind when Isaiah says to the one speaking, how long will this happen? He says that Lord will deceive the people and bring them into ruins and only a tenth of them shall be left and those will be my chosen people. It says it right here. I'm, and I'm not going to do it in layman's terms. I'll read it again. And I'll read it slow. Also, I heard a voice of the Lord saying, whom shall I send and who will go for us? Then said I, here am I, send me. And he said, go and tell these people, hear ye indeed, but understand not, and see ye indeed, but perceive not. Make the heart of these people fat, make their ears heavy, and shut their eyes, lest they see with their eyes, and hear with their ears, and understand with their heart, and convert, and be healed. Then said I, Lord, how long? And he answered, until the cities laid waste without inhabitant, and the houses without man, and the land be utterly desolate, and the Lord has removed men far away, and there be a great forsaken in the midst of the land. But yet in it shall be a tenth, and it shall return, and shall be eaten as a teal tree, as an oak, where substance is therein, with the cast of the leaves, the holy seed shall be substance thereof. So, that's telling you, this is the true Messiah in the end. Because when Jesus was walking the earth, there was no, there was no casting of people and only a tenth of the world survived it. There wasn't. There was no days that the lion and the ox laid together. There's nowhere in the Old Testament that tells you for the New Testament that there shall be a second coming saying that, well, Jesus is going to come and tell you to say, everybody really listen to the prophets, what they said, but I'm going to come back in another 2000 years. And then I'm going to tell you guys again, we told you so. Where in the scripture does it say that? It doesn't. That's why even the Jews said you can't be the Messiah because the great signs of the Messiah have not came yet. The people who have good hearts and souls who were deceived by Jesus, will they go to heaven? No one goes to heaven. No one goes to heaven. That's a fact. For that's what it says. In that day of judgment, they shall rise up and he shall live with them. They shall be given new bodies. They should be given new things. They're not, they're not, they're, no one goes to heaven. That's why he says, for the Lord shall come down from the heavens, right? And they shall judge all. Even the saints, everybody's on earth. It never says that. That's what the resurrection is, coming to the penal gland and having understanding, judging thy flesh. That's why all of us are having complications with what we're doing in the flesh. We don't feel right with it. You are judging yourself, right? No, no, nobody, none go to heaven. Nowhere in the scripture does it say anyone goes to heaven. Nowhere in the scripture. For I am making a new earth and a new heaven. 
For on that day, judgment shall come. I shall bring a new Jerusalem down and my people. I shall live with my people on the earth. Nowhere in scripture does it say, even in our prayer, our father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy kingdom come to the earth. And make us this day our daily breads and our sacrifices, etc. Da, 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 and forgive us all of our sins, all these things that we do. It tells it right in the prayer. Make it as in heaven, as on earth. Make it holy. Make it righteous. All those, when they pass, do not worry, for they are only asleep. Not until the great day of judgment shall they then rise. They shall be judged first. Then we will judge the living. That's what scripture teaches us. I shall send my prophet beforehand. He shall tell the people these great signs and great wonders. If they do not listen and hearken unto him, which they say is Elijah in the Old Testament, saying that the chosen one, he shall sit there. So whatever name you want to give him, then you already turn around and bring him to show the people. Then when the people don't do it, what happens? He says, if they do not follow my Messiah, I shall bring great destruction to the earth. That's what the scripture says. Uh, no, we're not. Yeah, technically you could say you're in heaven, right? Technically you could say it, you're in heaven. Because it's up to you how you make it, right? You can make hell, you can make your life living hell or you can make yourself peaceful, right? When you go somewhere and you're like, oh my God, this is like a little piece of heaven right here on earth. You say things like this and you don't realize that it's you who can make these things happen for yourself. You can't manifest, but you can make peace for things. And when you're protected by the Most High, demons will be pushed away from you. Hence, Michael the Archangel is the protector over God's chosen people. So they cannot be harmed, right? They can sit there and they can taunt us and we can have bad things happen around us that really bother us because we're human. We feel when we see Bad things happen to people because we're raised in that way. Are we able to see? Oh my gosh. Like, let's look at this. Hypothetically. I'm just using this as a hypothetical. What if you've seen this? What if you've seen... Uh, I'm going to ask everybody on here. And I'm, I'm sorry to go dark on you for a second here. I need everybody on here to give me an answer. So, you're sitting here. And you watch a child, 17, 18 years old, run between two houses out onto the street and he gets hit by a car on the spot. Dead. You could tell. It's the most bad hit you've ever seen. And you're like, there's no way that man survived that. How do you feel? How do you feel? Hopeless, sad, devastated. Now, everybody who just answered me that, I'm going to give you the same scenario. I'm going to give you the same scenario. Now, watch this. You read on the news. There was a 17-year-old, 18-year-old boy ran between two houses, got hit by a car and struck dead running away from a victim's house where he just diddled a little girl. How do you feel? Complete different scenario now, right? Complete different scenario. Same action, but you do not know that person before they got hit. It does change things. It does change things. That's why the world has manipulated us into feeling with our hearts and making us feel a certain way so we would not judge righteously on all things that happen. We live in a physical realm. That's why it says through the scripture, do not offer to take the debt for someone else. Do not offer to do these things for them. Make your yay, your yay, your nay, your nay. Be righteous. Make sure your house is in order. You are the temple. You are the house. Make sure your house is 
uh, in order, for you do not know when the landlord, I know it uses the word master, comes back to the house to turn around and ask his servants, what have you done with it? You are the servant. You were given a house here in this realm. Now, what did you do with the experience as this person here? Did you obey and hear my voice and hearken on to me to do the good things? Or did you get stuck in the bad things and be a bad person and think that you could justify by blaming somebody else for your actions and doing these things? When I say it that way, you say, yeah, it's not right. We can't do that. But then when I say it to you, but if you say that to a Christian in Jesus name, they justify it now. They justify. Well, no, because that, that's Jesus. That's different. He can take our sins and do all these things. No, no father can die for the son. No son can die for the father. That's why that saying is in the scripture because he knew they were going to try to say that the son of God would die for the father's sins against the world to make you think that his father made a mistake making mankind so you can have a free meal ticket to go out and do what you want to do. That's not how it works. That's not how it works. Don't get me wrong. He's loving, merciful, long-suffering. To those who obey my voice. Only those who obey my voice shall be my chosen people. Those who keep my laws, keep my statutes, keep my commandments, keep those things. Those will be my people. If you obey me, all things will go well for you. Now, if you're making mistakes in life, is he going to sit there and shit on you? No. No, he's not. He's going to reach out to you and show you things where your conscious kicks in and says, ah, I shouldn't have did that. And I, I had my phase, you know, I'm, I used to smoke pot all the time. I, I, I had my phase. I grew up. I don't waste my time on that shit no more. Stuff's no good for you. Everything we do in life is usually by pure, pure pressure. Not too many of us can say that we influence to say, I'm going to do this. I'm going to start a cult of some sort and start some fad eating Tide Pods or smoking crack or doing certain things, uh, egging cars, all this other shit that you see in the world. You don't come up with that. It's usually somebody shows you this. And we know that that's got to be from demonic powers. Those are from demonic powers, right? So... It shows us in the scripture he couldn't have been the Messiah. You can't show me in the scripture where he would die for your sin and then come back a second term, then make all things right. The, the Jews said, by what the scriptures teach, you can't be. Where's all the other prophecies? He said, all prophecies are fulfilled in me. How many people are on here right now that see prophecies being fulfilled today? Being, fil being fulfilled today. The one that was just out in thing where it filled up the desert. The Sahara or wherever that was. It started to flood. That was a 2,000 year old prophecy. <laughs> that was a 2,000, 3,000 year old prophecy. So, how were all prophecies fulfilled in him? They can't be. They can't be. That's why it's not until the end of days. All prophecies have to be fulfilled before the great day of judgment. You can't say that you're going to quit in the middle of the, the book. No, the Most High's word stands for what it is. He does not need to change. He does not need to change any of the laws or the times or any of those types of things. He will not do that. The only thing that shall change is the times and the seasons so they will not know themselves. This is a metaphor to say that they shall not know themselves. That people won't know. That could be a metaphor for anything. For times and seasons shall change. That they, uh, that they, when they, uh, let's see here, uh, the harvest. Hypothetically, metaphorically, they could be stalk, talking about man won't realize because they will think I'm supposed to be a woman. They'll have pronouns where I will identify as this. They will not know their appointed seasons or their times. This is a medical, metaphorical thing. We know that the time cannot change. We know that he promised us that we will have food. Those who are righteous will have righteous. All the unrighteous 
are the ones who will go through the trials and tribulations of things to come. We might think that we're having hard days and stuff like that, and that's the devil trying to put in your head. But in all reality, you have to think to yourself, do I need two, $3,000 a month that I've been living on to actually survive in this world? I like the fact that I live on that much money and stuff like I don't. I'm just using average prices of people, right? Because most people bring in about two, $3,000. They usually split it with their husband, spouse, whoever. Uh, when they live in a house, they split the bills. Both of them make that much money, usually about a month, uh, every couple weeks, sorry, etc. Majority of it goes towards bills, insurance, uh, car, uh, gas, etc. Right? So I'm saying hypothetically. So the problem is, is this luxurious life, lux meaning luminance, uh, which means uh, lightning, enlightening, meaning from the devil giving you enlightenment of good and evil. So this luxurious life that you've had, you feel we're going back in time. Why do you think the agenda of pushing electronics and all this stuff so fast to keep our minds spinning on how much technology is coming out to keep us busy that we say, I can't even keep up with technology today because it's just so quick. They are coming out with things left, right, and center. I don't even know. I, I miss the old days. That's how you could tell who you are. That's how you could tell who you are. Right? Well, how's it going there, Donnie? Hello from Canada. North Canada. But anyways. So, um, I was only going to come on just for a few minutes. It turned into 47, 50 actually. Um, I will post this. Um, I will be on tomorrow. Uh, I've been helping friends paint fences and help one guy do a car audio install this week that took two days, which killed me for my nighttime because I was all the way up there. And this is my phone. This is my personal phone that I use for talking on. And I didn't have TikTok on it because it's been acting up. When I had it on this one, I uploaded my last video. It went through. This one will not allow me to do it. It only allows half the video to go through. I don't understand that. I'm still kind of flabbergasted by it. Considering when I downloaded the video on this phone, it shows me in my gallery. The, um, uh, the video was an hour and 11 minutes. When I uploaded it onto YouTube, it showed it was 44 minutes. I don't get it. I did it on this guy and it showed me it went right through. So I don't know what's up with that. Something's up with this phone. So, um, but I will be posting and I will be on tomorrow for sure um, at uh, four o'clock. If I can get on a little bit earlier, I'll try to come on a little bit earlier um, and we're going to continue, but I'm going to slow it down and I'm going to break down. I'm going to try and hit like a two, three hour mark because I want to say everything I need to say slowly so we can all join and speak on it and see where it is. And then I will jump from verse to verse after we've read it, break it down to PowerPoints like how I used to, showing you this is this line, this line, this line, where in the prophecies, where in the scripture did it say this was going to happen, etc. How to break everything down. That way you can see. Then you'll be able to tell these guys have lied to us. Religion has lied. You cannot tell me that the Most High... If someone can convince me the Most High was a, like a God that says, I will rip everything apart. I don't give two shits. If you can show me in the scripture where it says that, then we can honestly look at it and say, well, that's why he started so many religions. That's why he has so many messiahs or false promises or promises, whatever you want to consider them as. That's why you could say this. But we know that he had chosen people in the very beginning. Two seeds. Righteous and unrighteous. That's what the scripture teaches us. Even it said that there shall be two different nations in uh, Rebecca, where she had the two children, Jacob and um, Esau. Um, they turned around and said that they shall rise up two nations. How do you rise up two nations when they say nations meant a people? If you're twins, maybe not identical twins, if you're twins... You're going to have two nations. Why is it saying this? Because it's showing us the birth of the world. 
he made two beings. One was good, one was bad. The tree of life, the tree of knowledge. Michael the archangel, Lucifer. Um, the good angels, the bad angels. There's two sides and only two sides, righteous and unrighteous. That's how it is. The Most High didn't make a nation to say that my chosen people will be a certain color or only men because women are to obey men, um, all these other things. That is not how it goes. That is religion. That is the place that they put on here. The Most High says, I see not those things. Judge the inner temple, the spirit, the heart. Purify their heart. How do you really feel? How do you express yourself and go through the world? That's what I want you. I don't want you to judge the outside of the uh, flesh because those people don't belong to the Most High. Those people serve vanity, money, like greed, all those types of things. They serve the world. For you cannot have two masters because one will hate the other. So either serve the Most High or you serve the Lord, which we know Lord means Baal, meaning owner, slave driver. That's what it is. I know it's a lot to swallow, but a lot of people don't understand. Like it's been, we've been deceived. He says it right in the own book. The devil who deceived the whole world. How could the devil deceive the whole world? And why would the Most High say that from Adam, if it was the devil deceiving Adam, how could he say that he deceived the whole world through Adam and hold and write a book about it and then hold judgment on everybody? He wouldn't. Because then why would you have trials and tribulations and, and then the Messiah come? Why would the Most High say, I shall come and visit the earth to live upon it with my chosen people? You can't justify that that's what it meant. It meant the devil made religions deceive the whole world into false idolization and prayer to these uh, idols, carved images, um, uh, all the things that you're not supposed to do. All the things you're not supposed to do. In the Ten Commandments, if you were an inspector and you walked into any church, synagogue, uh, a, a mosque, any of those things, and you look at the Ten Commandments, Love God and only God. Okay, so let's walk into a mosque. Well, they say Allah is God and the Creator. That's the only one. They would pass that test. Let's go to the Jews. The Jews said the same thing. Let's go to the Christians. Christians, no. They love Jesus, the Son of God. So violation number one. Okay, you guys, we got a ticket for you guys. Make no engraven images from heavens or below. Okay, Walk into a mosque. As soon as you see, you walk in, there's gold things all over the place. There's an, uh, a, 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 a cube inside the Mecca. Um, they have that. They have a rug with idols on it for uh, their, um, their towers and places that they go to worship and stuff. So they're gone. Go into the uh, synagogue. They got candles that are made of uh, gold. And they got the false ark, which have two angels on the top. Thou shalt not have no engraved images of the heavens are above. There's angels. You're not supposed to have that. And angels don't even look like anything they say they do. They don't show up with appearing with wings and stuff. And then you walk into Christianity. They got dead people hanging up all over their walls. And they got carved images. All of them violate the laws. If you were to walk in and do a checklist, they violate the laws right off the bat. They, they do right off the bat. So, we've been lied to. The Great Awakening is coming into knowledge. Listen to what people might have to say. Don't judge them on what they're saying. Just say, okay, well, you know what? This guy's crazy, or this guy's good, or this woman over here talks a crap, but this woman says this thing once in a while. Somebody says something. Dig in. Research. That's what he tells us. Seek me and you shall find. Everybody needs to be doing research. We were locked down on COVID, and what did everybody do? They got free checks from the government. and Well, not everybody, but we got a lot of free checks from the government. Pretty much... Everything was given. Rent was super cheap. They gave extra money. That way that extra 50 bucks to 100 bucks to two, three, 500, whatever money that they gave extra to help you during this crisis, what did you spend it on? Because you weren't allowed to travel. So you had, had money in savings accounts. Everybody sat there and spent what? Drugs, partying, on extra stuff that they didn't need. I'm guilty of buying tools. 
because I was building speaker boxes. I'm like, well, I'm bored of shit. Can't go out anywhere. I'm just going to start building things. I got nothing else to do. That's what I spent my, and weed. I was smoking weed at the time. I gave it up though, the end of that year, uh, 2020. I, I gave it, I gave it up. A voice kept telling me something. You need to stop. So what I was doing is I was hearing like all these types of things, talking about, you know, you got to read the Bible, destruction, everything is coming on and everything is going on in the world. And this was happening for me like for two years. And I'm just like, man, like this is killing me, bro. Like I can't handle this shit. So I was smoking weed to try to become numb or relaxed and all that stuff. And I found I wasn't even getting high. In fact, I thought that I was smoking too much weed and it was having the reverse psychosis on you because they say if you smoke too much, you just, it has the opposite effect. I thought that's what I was going through and everything like that. No, I just couldn't get high. I just could not get high. So I said to myself, it's not worth it. So that's what triggered me. I don't want to be spending money on this stuff. And if I'm not getting high, why am I wasting money? I'd rather spend it on other things. So I got away from smoking weed because of those reasons. But guilty as charged. When it went into major lockdown, I sat there and just, I, I mostly broke down scripture, but I was building speaker boxes for myself, learning how to uh, cut wood and everything like that. I remember doing it from school and I remember I built my first box when I was like 14 years old, all this other stuff. But that's where I got drawn into. I had no friends because anybody who wanted to hang around me, yo, bro, this is what it says in scripture right here, man. This is what it says in scripture. Driving down the street, I would see something. An address would pop out to me. Boom, I'd go right to Psalms. To hear and I'd read in this book or in the book of Enoch and I'd read in this book. And I'd be like, look at this. This right here says this and look at this right in Enoch, this chapter, this verse. Look at it. It says the same thing. Isn't that crazy? And then everybody was just like, bro, not everything has to do with scripture. Not everything has to do with the Bible. And I pushed all my friends away because they didn't want to hear that. And so I found out they're not my true friends because salvation and the word, you can never say you talk too much about it. You can never talk too much about it. Is there a time where you could say that you could use a break and switch the conversation up a little bit? Yes, you can, but all things are to be on the word of God. That's what it's supposed to be. Because unless thou is walking perfectly, you don't live on the words, you do the works, the deeds, right? That's what it tells us. So none of us are walking down here perfect, but that's the glory of this. The Most High loves us so much, he let us make mistakes and says, I shall send knowledge and the Messiah to the earth to give to the people so that they will have salvation in me. And when I do come to the earth to visit, then I will. they will not face my wrath of judgment, the angels of punishment, whatever word or whatever verse you would like to use from the scripture. So yeah, yeah, no, it's crazy, right? But anyways, uh, glory to the uh, glory to the Most High. Um, thank you guys very much. And like I said, tomorrow we will start on Isaiah 7, 6 and 7, or sorry, 7. And I will go through how it describes saying that Elijah was supposed to be John. Elijah was known as this one. Elijah is the one that goes to heaven, but yet we don't know when Elijah is supposed to come back, but yet it says Elijah is supposed to come back. How is the duplicate of how it says the same thing in Enoch? And it says the same thing with Jesus. So now you have to ask yourself out of three people, three people, major peoples in the books, is Enoch the truth, Elijah the truth, or is Jesus the truth? Now, all of you guys that are on here right now, uh, you guys know that Jesus, it's saying he's Lucifer. He, he bluntly says it. Uh, tomorrow, I will be on whatever time it is where you are right now, an hour back. So right now, it's 5 o'clock Eastern time for me. I will be on here at 4 o'clock tomorrow, an hour behind tomorrow. So 23 hours from now. So yeah, oh, and you could tell when you read the book of Enoch, you could tell because everybody was frightened by Enoch. They kept uh, Elijah in there. Jesus bigs up Elijah, telling you to pay attention to John, who is Elijah. He tells you all these things and you know that he's already deceiving you on things. So how do you take anything that he says? Even his disciples said that Enoch was a righteous man that walked with God and never tasted death. How do you cheat death? You can't. You can't. The Most High is the only one who can bring you from a place. 
He's the only Savior on a tacticality. Yes, can you say the Messiah is a Savior? The Messiah is not a Savior. Remember, the Most High chose His Messiah to come, who was highly anointed with knowledge, to bring to the people so they shall have salvation in Him. Most people think it meant him as the Messiah. No, in him, because all things are in him through the Messiah, the word. So all things were that way. Yes, they were all given onto the, 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 the Messiah, the word. All things were given onto him. But the only reason it was given is because he glorifies the father and the father glorifies him. That's the only reason. Hence, I place my spirit upon that man. So who is he? The man, if his spirit is upon that man, it is the most high working through him in a physical form to speak to the people. So, anyways, yes, each one teach one. Um, treat each other with love, man. And it's hard to do. Only find the people in your circle that are good. The rest of them, we just have to mingle until, uh, you know, it's not that much longer, man. What is it, like uh, 390 something days left in this uh, bad boy? So, anyways, glory to the Most High. And thank you guys all. I uh, hope you had a great day. Um, great weekend. Um, hopefully, these guys are spending good time with your family and all that stuff. And kids are getting out of school uh, in the next month. Uh, any of you guys have kids? When you get some spare time, just a thought. Uh, start planning out some things. Um... Watch what your kids are really interested in that don't cost so much money, but things that you can actually sit down there and enjoy and having time together as little best friends. Um, the fun things, yes, going out and paying a shitload of money to have them happy for a day. Da -da -da -da. That's all great and all, but that doesn't bond people. You take your child to those types of places they just want to run amok and jump on roller coasters and go cruising around and eating all those crazy bad foods for you and all that stuff. Build stuff that builds character with each other. Build uh, tree houses, dog houses, cat houses, bird houses. Those are super cheap. Um, painting, uh, water balloon fights. I don't remember the last time that we had water balloon fights. Um, stuff like that, man. The, the simple things uh, that keep you together. So you can keep your eye on your children because we already know what these schools are teaching them. And you have to be weary and not letting them go to strangers' houses. I'm not paranoid and I'm not like that to think that crazy, but we know that the world's getting fucked up. So the best thing you could do, as it says in the scripture, the father, he shall teach the children to love each other, to love the, the, the parents and the parents to, uh, for the ch children to obey their parents and the, ch the parents to teach their children. I'll read it exactly how it says Malachi, Malachi 4 verse 5. I'll read exactly how he says it. Uh, and the Lord is, uh, promises to send you the prophet Elijah before that great terrible day. He shall lead the children and the parents to love each other, other more. So that when I come, I will not bring doom to the land. Uh, 396 days. Is that what we're at? 396. <sighs> Let's see if there's a 39.6. I was reading some of the... E Enoch on days that it's off I read the book of Enoch just to see what the scripture says so I'm going to go to 39 and see if verse 6 and the righteous shall prevail in his days and the righteous and the elect shall be in innumerable and will be, be uh, before him forever and ever glory to the most high uh, so that's chapter 39 verse 6 out of the book of Enoch and look at like what, everything we we're just talking about. And look at what this is. 39. So all the 39s. Look at what this is. And it shall come to pass in those days that the elect and the holy children will descend from the high heaven. And their offspring will come, uh, will become one with the children of men. And in those days Enoch received the books of indignation and wrath and the books of turmoil and confusion. And there will be no mercy for them, says the Lord of Spirits. Now let's look at this. Was Enoch ever, does it tell you, this is how, this is how it tells you Enoch's the one who's to be present in the day of, of, uh, of uh, tribulations. Yes or no, when Enoch was present in the earth prior, was he a part of the times when there was complete destruction on the earth? Was he the one that was down and there was a whole bunch of stuff that was coming? 
No. He was a righteous man teaching all the people. It wasn't until after he went and his grandfather or his son and his son's son, they started to do terrible things and the Nephilim started having sex and doing all kinds of bad things and then he started to wipe them out. Noah, exactly. So, this tells us this is at the end of days and it shall come to pass in those days that the elect and the holy children will descend from the high heaven and their offspring will become one with the children of men. And in those days, Enoch received books of indignation and wrath. When was he to receive wrath? The wrath of God. We know that this has to be about end times and the books of turmoil and confusion. Which ones are the books of turmoil and confusion? The Bible, full of co confusion, turmoil, all the bad things that it teaches you inside it about the raping of uh, different villagers, tribes, etc., all this bad stuff. There will be no mercy for them, says the Lord of Spirit. So we know that everybody who follows these religions, hence why I shall tear down all of your all of your idols and all of your temples and all of those things that you represent that represent Baal, B-A-A-L, anything that is erected. That's why they say the erection of uh, Baal, the, the serpent sitting there with his fingers up and down and he has a, uh, a an erection, um, Sorry, I had to repeat that so many times. So I don't know if these guys have people who are standing around you. But anyways, um, saying that. So uh, that's why they say that it is of Baal. And in those days, a whirlwind carried me off of the earth and set me down in the end of the heavens. And I saw another vision, a dwelling place of the holy and the righteous place and the, of the righteous. And here my eye saw the dwelling places of the righteous angels and the resting place of the holy ones and the petitioned and interceded the prayer for the children of men and a righteous flowed before them like water and the mercy of the dew of the of the earth. Thus is thus it is among them forever and ever. And in that place my eye saw the elect one of righteous and of faith. And I saw his dwelling place under the wings of the Lord of spirits. And the righteousness shall prevail in his days. And the righteous shall be the uh, the righteous and the elect shall be innumerable and be before him forever and ever and all the righteous and the elect ones before him shall be as bright as a fiery light and the mouths shall be full of blessings and their lips shall praise the name of the lord of spirits righteousness and truth shall be before him and shall never fail there i wish to dwell and my spirit longed for that dwelling place and thus was decided at my portion was assigned and established by the lord of spirits so his portion and what he was assigned what do you mean his portion? For they were given on to him. That's why even Enoch was looked at as a great king before known as wisdom. Who copied this? Solomon. Solomon did the same thing, saying that he asked for wisdom. The wisdom of the Most High was given unto, the book, uh, unto Enoch. Enoch taught them the ways of the earth and all of these things of righteous scales. Now they try to make Solomon look like he did the exact same thing. But yet, Jesus tells you, you could tell a fruit, a tree by its fruits. Well, we know that David, we know that Solomon, all these guys murdered, raped, had sex with other people's women, had slaves, did all these things. Everything that the Lord says, I want my people to be free from the abomination of chains that was given unto them by Asherah and her son. Nowhere in the book of Enoch, nowhere in the book of Enoch did it ever show Enoch doing any terrible things. Nowhere. But how come in the Bible it shows you these people who do terrible shit, the Lord found favor in them? Because we know what Lord that is, right? So anyways, uh, glory to the Most High. Everybody have a great night and I will be on tomorrow. Thank you.